Okay, now uh, I want to also um, refresh your memory on some other results that we have done. So, this is going to be a quick review, review with a very specific purpose and uh, hopefully this is going to be the uh, building block for some of the things that we are going to be discussing today. So, if you remember we, we wrote about a block which had the following notation. It was a parallel to serial converter of size m. Okay. Now, uh, do you do you remember how how this was how this was done? Parallel to serial conversion. Do you uh, recall? Uh, again, uh, basically, it was a down sampler. Okay, by m that was the top branch, and then we passed it through an advance operator right because we want x z if x 0 is on the first branch we want x of 1 on the other branch which means that it must have passed through an advance operator down sample by a factor of m dot 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 last advance operator and then you passed it through a down sample by a factor of m. So, this was the serial to did I do that wrong? It is a this is a serial to parallel converter. I am sorry. This is not parallel to serial, this is a serial to parallel converter. Okay? Yes. And uh, th then we also had another block which was the parallel to serial converter. So, which to which you would feed in multiple blocks. So, this would have multiple blocks, this is uh, output number 0, this would be output number m minus 1. So, likewise you have the input number 0, input number m minus 1, this is a parallel to serial converter, parallel to serial converter also of dimension m and this one we said had the following structure where uh, you would have the up sampler in order to get the sequencing correct, you would have up samplers in each of these branches, but these would be combined using a delay. If you remember that was the, of course you can uh, do a, um, the uh, parallel to serial to parallel conversion using a delay operation, but then the, the data samples will get, uh, would get sw uh, swip, uh, swapped around. So, basically this is the structure that we have okay, uh, up sample by m going through a chain of delays and then getting combined. Okay. So, I will just put dot 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 this is a add adder all of these are adding nodes. Okay. So, that was the parallel to serial uh, parallel to serial conversion. Okay. Now, there was a uh, result that we wrote down if you if you remember uh, which was sort of seemed like a, a somewhat of a trivial result. The result was if I have a serial to parallel converter of dimension m that means, I will get these parallel lines and then I pass this through a parallel to no, I, I, I should do the do the other way. I'm sorry. I, I need to do the uh, parallel to serial converter. The parallel to serial converter. Okay. I have um, many of these parallel to serial converter uh, and then followed by a serial to parallel converter. And uh, if, if these are in denoted as x naught of n all the way to x m minus 1 of n and the outputs are denoted as y naught of n to y m minus 1 of n. 
this was trivially uh, mapped in the following way. It was all parallel lines with a gain of 1. Okay. So, uh, this was the x naught of n, x 1 of n, x m minus 1 of n uh, mapping to the output. So, basically there was nothing happening in the processing, the input got uh, translated to the output and this was a seemed like a very trivial type of result. Okay. Now, can we revisit this problem because that is what is going to be interesting to us. Uh, when we actually did the uh, representation of the serial to parallel and the parallel to serial, uh, we did not really study any applications. The applications are now coming in here. Now, uh, keep this structure in mind basically how the signal is combined in a parallel to serial converter and the serial to parallel. Now, if I introduced a delay of 2 units of time z minus 2, okay. can you help me map what these uh, input output relationships are going to be. So, basically uh, there are m inputs exactly like before. And there are m outputs. Not clear that uh, they will be just a, a straight mapping like before. Uh, let us just visualize it. There is a branch, so take the upper branch, the topmost stream. The uppermost stream goes through a upsampling by a factor of m, then hits this delay z power minus 2, and then comes to the branch on the outside with the downsampling by a factor of m that will be 0 because that we know because if there is any uh, non zero delay between the upsampler and the downsampler that will get killed so will this signal ever have a chance of coming to the output let's see if it will come through the uh, other any of the other branches if it comes to the next branch it's upsampled by a factor of m there's a delay z power minus 2 and then the next branch has got z that means overall transfer function is z power minus 1 will get killed. But if you drop down one more channel, z power minus 2 in the channel, z squared in the chain will come out. So, actually the, uh, the x naught of n actually uh, comes out on a different branch. It comes out on this branch. Okay. So, this is x naught of n x naught of n, y, y 2 of n is equal to x naught of n. Okay. So, and you can uh, easily verify that uh, the x 1 of n will come out through y 3 and so on until we hit x of m minus 2. Okay. The last one is x of m minus 2. Okay. Now, x of m minus 2 means that it was the, the last but one branch, it has got uh, m minus 2 uh, delays in the chain that it, it will go through. Through the channel, what did it get? Uh, to, uh, another 2 units of delay, so it, it got z power minus m as the, uh, the, now which of these branches will it come out through? the first one because z power minus m is allowed that means non zero but when i do the down sampling i will get uh, one unit of delay so this one will be y sorry i use the red color this one will be y zero of n is actually equal to x of m minus 2 don't forget the delay there is an n minus 1 so, basically there is a uh, connection between this one and this, but we have to mark a delay on that branch okay, that when you simplify and similarly you can verify that the last branch also comes out with a delay. Okay, so, y 1 of n is equal to x of m minus 1 n minus 1. So, a very interesting thing happened, it kind of took a cyclic shift, all of them sort of got a cyclic shift, but when they came back up, those two branches had a, uh, had a delay element to it. 
Okay, so uh, uh, this is this is uh, something for you to keep in mind because we are going to uh, build on, build on this concept, and um, just as we uh, use this concept earlier, and we'll come back to use it to in today's class. We also had another uh, uh, concept that we have um, leveraged. We'd like to uh, use it use it for uh, today's uh, discussion as well. Okay, so the other one was polyphase decomposition. Polyphase decomposition. Remember, there were two types of polyphase decomposition, and almost very rarely we we came across any application of the type two decomposition. So let me just refresh your memory on that because today we will be using the type two summation k equal to zero to m minus one z power minus k e k z power m. This is type one. Type two is summation k equal to 0 to m minus 1 z power minus m minus 1 minus k r k z power m. This is type 2. Now, one observation that we did not uh, emphasize earlier because it was not necessarily the, uh, the time for it is to simplify this one. Take this z power m minus 1 outside the summation. What will it become? Z power minus m minus 1 summation k equal to 0 to m minus 1 z power plus k. There is minus of minus z power plus k r k z power m. So, this is type 2 also. Basically, I just have simplified that. So, actually another if you take one more step, you take this z power minus 1 to the other side then what we get is z power m plus 1 m sorry z power m minus 1 not plus 1 z power m minus 1 times h naught of z is equal to summation k equal to 0 to m minus 1 this is uh, z power k z power k r k z power m okay i'm just nothing uh, nothing clever or uh, tricky here just basically rewrote the type 2 polyphase decomposition okay now for a very specific reason this looks like a non causal representation it's actually not non causal it's strictly uh, basically what we did was you took a filter h not you kind of shifted it and uh, rewrote it so that you get this representation. Now, why did we even take the effort to do this? Primarily, if you want to go back and look at this structure, if you want polyphase components which have a structure without delays, but see otherwise what you would do is you would end up with only the type 1, all of them will have delay. So, if I want a structure where there is the provision for me to uh, move the down sampler around, but I want to have powers of z right delay uh, advanced element uh, advanced uh, elements then that is why th so anything which requires this type of a representation you will actually will actually utilize the type 2 polyphase decomposition. So, again keep that keep that uh, picture in your mind we will come back to link it to the when we need it in, in a short while we will do that. 